what are we going to do? We've already lost one child, but the rest will follow. If we don't get some food soon, the whole village will starve. What Martha says is true. The black rot has killed all our crops. We've eaten our cattle. If we don't get food, we will starve. You look to me for advice. What can I say? If the soil fails, what is there to do? Go to the castle again. Beg, for the sake of our children. No, Martha, no. They've refused us once already. There's little enough even at the castle. And Sir Basil will keep what he has for his own stomach. What are we to do then? Just stay here and wait? Let me take the horse and wagon. There must be a village somewhere where the black rod hasn't struck. But we have no money. Where will you find a village that will give grain to a stranger? Does anyone remember the tale the tinker told us? Yes, I remember. Many is the winter night I've told it to the children. About Robin Hood and the outlaws of Sherwood Forest. How they stole from the rich Normans and gave to the poor and helpless. We're poor enough, the Lord knows, and helpless. Perhaps Robin Hood would help us. But Sherwood Forest must be 30 or 40 leagues away from here. It's a long and desperate journey. And besides, no one can leave here without permission. Think of the danger. Danger? I can only think of the children. Very well, then. Which one of us should go? I shall be the one. I have no wife. The rest of the men can stay behind and forage for their families and keep them alive until I return with the grain. Aren't you all at work? We're supposed to be working on the castle moat. Do you want a flogging for disobedience? We had a burial. My son. We're almost starving. We're too weak to do heavy work. I'm not interested in your troubles. Get to work. You must get away, Andrew. It's our only chance. Find Robin Hood. Use the window. Cheese, John. Go on, don't hold back. My grain fetched a good price at Nottingham this morning. <laughs> Look what I bought my daughter at the market. Yes, it's real dyed wool and, and three different colors, Father Dust Boy. Yeah, I can afford it this year. My crop's never been better. Father, that man doesn't look well. Something wrong, lad? Uh, I've been driving the wagon two days and two nights. My, my muscles must be stiff. Yeah, no wonder. Well, go in and get yourself a great tall mug of ale. That'll set you right. Don't worry about him. He looks strong enough. Yes. Beer, ale, or what? Oh, I, I haven't any money. And there's nothing much I can do for you, young man. You could let me wait here. Cluttering up the place and not buying anything. Why should I let you wait around like that? It's important. I've got to see Robin Hood. Robin Hood? What makes you think you'd be likely to find him here? Well, on my way through Sherwood Forest, I met a friar. A friar? What did he look like? Well, the, there was rather a lot of him. Anyway, he seemed so friendly, I told him about needing help. About how our village was starving. And he said I should come to the Blue Boar Inn and wait. He said that Robin Hood might come. He was right. Hello, Joan. Hello, Robin. This fellow wants to talk to you. Are you really Robin Hood? I am. Who are you? My name is Andrew. I'm from the village of Lotton. Lotton? You've traveled a long way. Sit down. Bring us some ale, Joan. Let's... I heard you say that your village was starving. Yes, the black rot. It came just before harvest time, when the grain bin was empty. Well, wouldn't the Lord of your manor help? Oh, he's a cold-hearted Norman dog. He'd see us all die off and never lift a hand. We'd already buried one little boy. Everyone was desperate. So they decided I should take the wagon and come here. 
Well, you've come to the right place. The harvest has been good here. I think we can send you back with a fully loaded wagon, Andrew. The trouble is, we're hard-working people from dawn till dusk, but Sir Basil takes everything. I mean, we haven't any money. But we have. Here, take this. Well, I can't take your money. Well, it's not exactly... Uh... Let's say I was just taking care of it for an emergency like this. Oh, you're saving the life of everyone in my village. I, I don't know how to thank you. Yeah, this will wash the dust out of your throat. Better? Aye. Let's investigate this grain market. Robin! Well, it is good to see you. Hello, Master Hodges. How are you? In good health, I'm glad to say. I hear you've had a fine harvest this year. Oh, not too bad at all. What's the market price? Four deniers a sack. I want you to meet my friend Andrew from Lottam. He's here to buy a wagon load of grain. What, crop trouble in your district? Yes, complete failure. Black rot. He's undertaken to save his village from famine. So that's why you drove yourself so hard on the road. Well, I've got some I can sell you, and I hear there's a surplus at Brixton and Hillcrest. Oh, well, I could send our men there tonight. We could have the grain here in the morning. Good idea. I'll meet you back here tomorrow morning, an hour after sunup. And don't you worry, Andrew. We'll fill that wagon up for you. Thank you, Robin, for everything. Father, this young man's a complete stranger here. No one to stay the night. I do think we ought to invite him back. Margaret's right. We'll be glad to have you. Oh, thank you, sir. Put your wagon in the barn here. You'll ride with us. You think he's the man we've been looking for? Well, only a Freeman could make a journey like that. I thought of that. And even Freeman don't usually have purses that thick. There's something else. You may not think it important. Anything that will help to make my girl happy is important. I think he looks good. Mm. You've got good, sturdy arms, Andrew. I dare say you're a hard worker. Oh, I work in the fields as long as it's daylight, sir. I suppose you have to work hard with a family to raise. Me? <laughs> well, I, I'm not married. What's considered a good day's plowing in Lottam? Well, most of the men can plow an acre a day, sir. Uh, I do just about that myself. I turn up an acre and a half. Uh, with an early start, of course. Ooh. Well, that was the best meal I ever ate. I suppose you're used to plain fare without a woman to cook for you. Yeah, let me do that. Father, I want you to speak to him about me. Yes, I have a feeling he'd make you a fine husband, Margaret. But I've had little time to find out much about him. Well, he's strong, he's handsome, and he's a hard worker. What else do you need to know? And if you don't talk to him today, he'll be gone by tomorrow. If he's the lad you want, I'll speak to him. Thank you, Andrew. Andrew, I want to show you something. You see that nice stretch of land that rolls down to the river? Yes, sir. It belongs to Sir Richard of the Lee. He's the only fair-minded landowner in the Shire. Yes, it's being fair that keeps him poor. Well, I was born Sir Richard's serf, but he made it easy for me to become a freeman. Now I farm my own strip of land down there and pay my rent and my taxes, and beyond that I'm obligated to no man. There's always enough left over after I sell my crops to provide me a good living. You're a lucky man, sir. But I'm growing older, Andrew, and there's all that land to be worked. Now, if I'd had a son, he could have taken it over. But as it is, it's a husband for Margaret I have to think about. Oh, there have been men after her, mind you, but I've refused to give her to any lad who wasn't free and could prove it in court. He has to in order to have this land. I won't marry my daughter to a serf. Tell me, do you like Margaret? She's the finest girl I ever saw, sir. Well, then, we're at the end of our talk. But what makes you so sure that I'm a freeman, sir? Well, if you're bound to a manor, you can't travel from one shire to another, and no bondsman I ever heard of had enough coin to save a whole village from famine. So if there's anything left to be talked out, it's between you and my daughter. Did Father speak to you? Yes, he did. Margaret, I must return to my village with the grain. I know that, but then you can come back. No. Andrew, you'd be very happy farming that piece of land. And I'd do anything in this world to make you happy with me. You will come back, won't you? Look, Margaret, I... I, I know it's not a thing a man can decide in an instance. But promise me that when you get home, you'll think about it. 
I'll be waiting. That'll last your village through the whole winter. They'll honor you forever, Robin, as the finest friend they ever had. It seems I'm not the only new friend you've made, Andrew. Farewell and Godspeed. I ought to be able to wait for your answer, Andrew, but I can't. You will come back, won't you? Margaret, I can't go off without telling you the truth. I can't come back. I'm a serf, not a freeman. I could never be the man your father wants for you. But you could buy your freedom like my father did. But Sir Basil doesn't want to free us. He set the price of freedom on any able-bodied man at ten silver marks. Ten silver marks? No one in our village ever saw that much money in his hand at one time. There must be something we can do. No, Margaret, there's nothing. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Did you get it? I brought it all the way from Nottingham. Hello, you're in luck. I am Lardner to the Earl of Rutland. Oh. It's my job to see that the Earl is well fed. We have meat, of course, from the hunting preserves. But because of this wretched famine, we have no grain. And the Earl is a man who likes a little bread to sop up his gravy. Uh, I'm <laughs> sorry, sir, but my grain is not for sale. The Earl is a rich man. Because of the emergency, he's authorized me to pay almost any price. But, sir, this grain is for my village. It's to keep my people from starving. I'll offer you five silver marks. Drive on, fella. I think we can come to terms. <coughs> Not fish again. Well, it's just a question of luck. You should know that, Prior. When the fish are biting three days in a row, and the huntsmen aren't bringing in any game, why, we just keep on eating fish. Ah, oh, well, they say a pote tut vivas, non vivere ut edas. Hmm? One must eat to live. Pity, on my way here, I had such a wonderful vision of a savoury venison stew. It was a true vision. Well done. A dish of bread meat rejoices the soul. Well, we found your young man from Lotham, Prior, and we were able to help him. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Of all the disasters that befall mankind, hunger is the worst. <laughs> We've got a whole wagon load of grain now, so at least they'll be able to make bread. Oh, the Lord be thanked for that. This is a nice plug beast. Who's doing the cooking today? Oh, bread is scarcely the answer to a hungry belly. Do you know the road to Lotham, Prior? Oh, yes, quite well. I was through those parts on my way to... Robbie, you don't mean... We couldn't travel by the highways. We'd have to keep to the woods. You know what's in my mind, don't you? Yes, I'm afraid I do. Both of them? Even two stags wouldn't go very far in a hungry village. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> ah, well. When do we leave? The sooner the better. If we can overtake Andrew, we won't have to go the whole way. It's a long journey. Don't you think we ought to fortify ourselves first? With a nice piece of fish... Come on, Friar. You simply have to bow to the power of fate, Andrew. Fate has stepped in and given you the opportunity of a lifetime. How much would this load of grain be worth ordinarily? Oh, about 80 deniers, sir. 80 deniers. <laughs> a trifle. 
Don't you understand the opportunity you have? Because of this famine, your 80 denniers worth of grain is suddenly worth a fortune. I'll offer you six silver marks. When does a serf have the chance to earn money like that? Oh, I, I know I'll never get a chance like that again, sir. And I'll never see that amount of money in my lifetime. All right. Now, the people of your village are hungry, and I'm very sorry, but... Really, what do a few serfs more or less matter? They matter because they're my people, sir. I've lived in that village all my life. Seven silver marks. Don't you realize what you can buy with that money? Clothes, furniture, wine, luxuries. I don't want any of those things, sir. Oh, then there is something you want, Andrew. Yes, sir, there is. Back in Nottinghamshire, there's a strip of land that I could work, practically as my own master. And a woman to come back to in the evening when the day's work's done. Well, what's stopping you? I'd have to be a freeman. But you can buy your freedom. Start life anew. Are you going to live a life of loneliness? A craven, sir? Destined to die childless and unmourned? Or are you going to do the one strong act that will bring meaning to your life? Strike the memory of the village from your mind. You need never return to it. You'll never get this chance again, you know. You can buy your freedom with eight silver marks. It's a great deal of money, but even that much wouldn't buy my freedom. Sir Basil said he wouldn't accept a groat under ten. Turn the wagon. Go back to the crossroads and turn right. What? The price is outrageous, but I'll pay it. Oh, now look, sir. You'll get your ten silver marks. You can buy your freedom, your strip of land, your woman. But... Well, that's Andrew the wagon. Aye, so it is. But he's heading directly away from his village. Come on, little John. What's the matter, Andrew? Are you lost? You're going the wrong way. We're heading for the Earl of Rutland's castle. We can hardly be lost when the castle is in sight. You better explain this, Andrew. Why aren't you taking the grain to the village? The grain is going to the castle. It belongs to the Earl. I bought it on his behalf. You mean you sold the grain, the food for your own village? And why should he not sell it? When we get to the castle, the Earl will give him ten silver marks. Enough to buy his freedom. Is that your horse? Yes. Well, get on it and go. You can tell your master that you couldn't buy grain, not at any price. The Earl will have his revenge for this. I'll get him to send his men to hunt you down. No, little John, let him go. We'll take a chance on the Earl's men overtaking us. You better load the deer on the wagon. Tuck, you have a more forgiving nature than I have. Will you drive the wagon? I don't think I want to sit next to him. Father, I, I'm so ashamed. But you'll never understand how much it would have meant to me to be a free man and, and take a wife. Oh, I know I've sinned. All men are sinners, my son. But there is hope for the man who repents truly. But I do, Father, I do. If you found no grain, Ripon, you better not return to the castle. The Earl says it's the torture chamber for you unless you put bread on his table. I found grain, plenty of it. A whole cartload. Bought it from a serf. Well, where is it? Stolen. Three scoundrels, two of them dressed in green, the other one looked like a friar. Well, how long ago? Oh, about ten minutes. They can't get far with a load like that. They took the road to Lottam. as fast as you can. We'll try and hold them off. All 
right, Andrew. Do you still want to get that grain to Lotham? Yes, I do. But how? Start to unload those sacks off the wagon and build up a barricade. I didn't come prepared for a pitched battle. I have six. But shoot carefully. That was my last arrow, Robin. But what about the others? We're all right, Andrew. Thanks to you, the fight's won. You're a good man, Andrew. And a brave one. What am I doing here? This is your home, Andrew. Or will be. But, Margaret, I told you, I, I'm not a freeman. You are now, my boy. I paid Sir Basil his ten silver marks. You're a freeman now, Andrew, as befits my future son-in-law. So we can be married. Remember what you said about being able to plough an acre and a half a day? Well, now you're to be a member of the family. I'll expect you to work twice as hard. Father. Remember, an acre and a half. <laughs> Riding through the glen, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men, feared by the bad, loved by the good, Robin Hood. 